What really rubs me the wrong way is when people are like, just trust the process. It's not as easy as it sounds. And that's because I don't actually recommend you to trust blindly. It keeps you safe not to. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Lorena. I am a self-concept coach and I support women to shift their self-concept, step into a new identity, embody a new state of being and sustain it. <laughs> and essentially bridge the gap between who you currently are and who you desire to become. Because in order to manifest what you deeply desire, you need to step into a new version of yourself. And I want to help you become that version and maintain that state. If you like this video, then please do leave a like and leave a comment. And if you want more videos like this, if you enjoy content about your self-concept, conscious manifestation, shadow work, subconscious reprogramming, and all that good stuff, then please subscribe if you haven't already and switch on the notifications so that you don't miss any future videos. And if you would like support on your journey, if you want to transform your self-concept, whether you're just starting out or you would like to be supported with where you're currently at, I invite you to check out the links in the description box below where you will find so many free resources that you can feel really supported by. Today's video is more or less an update of a video that I made about two years ago, and that was on trusting the process and the bridge of incidents. You're welcome to watch that video of baby Lorena. There are some things that I said in there that I don't really stand by anymore. There are some things that I'll be saying today that will be repetitive, and there are also some new things that I didn't say back then that are really important with the awareness and the embodiment I have now. You hear it all the time, right? Trust the process. Trust the process. Just trust the process. But before we get into trusting the process, let's get into the manifestation process. First, I just want to acknowledge and honor that manifesting a reality, a future that is radically different from where you currently are, because the people that tend to come to me are not people who want to manifest a freaking rainbow. They are people who want to manifest desires that are big visions or that have a huge emotional charge connected to them. So to manifest that future, that reality, or even that self-concept, that is not easy if it's so different from where you are right now or you have all of these emotions attached to it because there's a contradiction between what you want and what you're attempting to call in and what your five senses show you, what you're actually physically and tangibly experiencing. So persisting in a reality that is different from what you're currently experiencing means you're going against everything that logic that your five senses tell you. And then also because people reflect beliefs back to you, right? Everyone is your mirror in a way. You may not only come up against events in your physical circumstances, you may also come up against doubt that other people project onto you that make you more insecure about what's even possible for you. I always like to say that the only person that really believes in you and the only person that you can really rely on is you. And me in a way, because as your coach, I will always believe in you. And I truly do believe in you. And that's because I know what is possible for you. That's because I've created so much proof in my own life and for my clients with my clients already that enables me to hold the vision and to keep the faith for my clients as well. But generally, you can't expect other people to believe in you. We would love that, but often to protect us because they project their own fears onto us, they might not. They might want you to play it safe. They want you to not get hurt. And depending on how big your desire is or how big the difference is between where you currently are and what you're looking to call in, it's a big leap. And you need to bridge that gap between your current reality and the reality you desire. Your current self-concept and the self-concept that aligns with that reality. That is essentially an expanded version of you. That's what I help you with. 
but that's still not easy, especially when it takes time, when it takes longer than you would like it to, or when a lot of things need to first happen or shift in the background for you to make it manifest. And during that time, when it's not yet here, when things are still shifting in the background, when obstacles are coming your way, you need to trust the process. And the more you trust the process, the more surrendered you will be. And surrender is really important. It's an important part of the process because resistance is the killer to your manifestation. It delays your manifestation. So that's why trusting the process is so important. It keeps you stable, it keeps you surrendered, and it lets you enjoy the process as well rather than just wait for the end result, which you will often block if you're just waiting anyway. So how do you learn to trust the process though? Because hello, it's not easy either. If I just tell you, oh, just trust the process. <laughs> everything inside of you that does not trust, everything inside of you that is in fear or in doubt or in resistance is gonna scream out and be like, no, why would we just trust? We might get hurt. But you can learn it. You can learn to trust the process and here's how. First thing is that trusting the process really means trusting yourself. There is nothing outside of yourself, really. There is no God who's looking if you're doing things right and who's then giving you permission to experience the things you want. It's all you, which means that trusting the process really means you're trusting yourself. And so that self-trust needs to be built. For example, I always want my clients to be very sovereign. I don't know what's right for them. I can give them the process and the guidance to connect to their own truth, but I don't give the answers because I don't know, they know best, you know best. Just like I know best for my life and my body and my state and my desires. I want you to leave my world and be able to rely on yourself and not be dependent on me or anybody else. And to do that, you really need to connect to your intuition, which also means connecting to your body. Your body is really a tool to manifest, to expand into a new version of yourself. And the more you connect to your body, the more you'll have a heightened intuition. And we are all intuitive beings. We are all psychic in a way. It's nothing special. It's not something that only some people have. We're all very intuitive. But when we're in a trauma response or in a survival state or a dysregulated nervous system state, or when we have some beliefs or emotions to integrate, some shadows that we're suppressing that we still need to integrate, then our judgment and our self-trust can be clouded. So that's when you may start doubting yourself or when you start looking outside of yourself for answers. And by the way, trusting yourself does not mean you can't ask for help or you can't ask for support. In fact, that goes along with it, right? I'm here to support you, but you need to trust yourself to choose the right person for you, to do the right thing for you, to choose the right coach or mentor. I have a lot of people who come to me with essentially coach trauma where they have picked the wrong coach. They were looking outside of themselves for answers. They were hoping somebody else would save them, but that's not how it works. Ask for support because you deserve it. Get a professional to help you, but know that they will only guide you to your own truth and your own answers within. And it's often the people who trust themselves the least who are holding themselves back from receiving help because they have this perception that they need to do it all on their own. Do ask for support, just don't put anybody on a pedestal. For example, my job as your coach is to bring out the individual intelligence of your body, your system, your being to connect you to your truth and your intuition, not mine. The self-trust is also important because it's a very personal journey. I often say how I work with one client is not the same as how I work with another client, even when it's in a group. And that's because different people are in different parts of their journey and they need different things for it or they have different nervous systems or different past experiences or perceptions. So it all depends. But the self-trust is a really foundational element. One of my clients this year manifested massive shifts in her life. Within just a few weeks in Recreate Yourself, she manifested a commitment in a relationship. She manifested a promotion in her job and a massive pay rise, a pay rise that is for most people more than their yearly salary. 
And how did that shift so quickly? It was through self-trust. Because before she came to me, she wasn't really trusting herself. And the self-trust freed her up to have these manifestations be ready and able to come in. The second aspect to learning to trust the process is to eliminate doubt. And that's because trust is the opposite of doubt. And take this phrasing eliminating doubt with a grain of salt because eliminating doubt does not mean that you'll never doubt ever again. It also doesn't mean that doubt is inherently a bad thing. It's not. Sometimes it can serve us. And it's a very human thing. When I have a new desire come through, initially I always doubt. Or same when my reality throws me a curveball. Of course I doubt in that moment. But how I navigate and integrate these doubts, that's where the difference lies. Because it's not about having full faith and full conviction. Sometimes you can get to that place. I've definitely been there. I'm there most of the time, I have to say that. But you can't know. Like, you don't truly know. Like, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know what my future holds. I just have my eye on the vision, whatever my vision is at that time, right? I can be pretty damn certain, but I don't know exactly what's going to happen. And that is also something to surrender to. You cannot control the process. This also goes hand in hand with navigating obstacles and knowing how to handle your inner critic. And of course, processing and integrating your emotions. Having the right handle on your doubt will shift you into trust. Thirdly, I want to talk about building trust. How do you trust the process? You build it. You build that trust in the process. What really rubs me the wrong way is when people are like, just trust the process. It's not as easy as it sounds. And that's because I don't actually recommend you to trust blindly. It keeps you safe not to. Trust is earned. Trust is built. If you trusted blindly all of the time, you would not survive very long on this planet. So that's why the idea of just trust, just persist, just imagine differently really rubs me the wrong way. Discernment is healthy. <laughs> Please question things. For example, if a stranger comes up to you, you're not just going to blindly trust everything they say. You don't know this person. You don't know if you can trust them. It's the same here. The trust in the process and the trust in yourself that is built. It's not just something that you're randomly choosing. It's earned, not given. And the reason I find it so easy now to step into trust and to fully let go and trust the process is because I have built so much proof. The process that I teach my clients and that I use myself has proven itself to work over and over again. And because I've proven to myself that it works, I've seen these incredible shifts in my client self-concepts and realities. I've seen massive surprising manifestations come through. There is not really much doubt that comes up anymore because there is so much proof. So there is trust for the future as well. The more proof you receive, the easier it will be for you to trust in the most impossible things, seemingly impossible things. And that's important because your trust in the process, your persistence will be tested. And I do have a masterclass series, which is completely free of charge on the topic of persistence. So if you would like to watch that, I can send you the replay. Please send me a DM on Instagram if that interests you. It's about striking the balance between surrender and persistence, the two states, because that balance is really essential and that comes with the trust. The fourth point I wanna speak about in learning how to trust the process is your self-concept, which is obviously something that I mention all of the time because <laughs> it's the root at the core of everything. But a changed self-concept, a self-concept that aligns with the future you're wishing to create leads to automatic trust and self-trust. Manifestation always comes down to a shift in your self-concept or your identity. I always say the work I do with my clients is very little manifestation work. It's the outcome you get, but we don't do a lot of visualization or meditation or imagination. It's very small and it comes right at the end. It's really about shifting their self-concept through a deep process of emotional integration. 
that goes into shifting your self-concept, which is why the changes are so radical, because we go right into the root, <laughs> we get right to the bottom of things, and we rewire it at the core. But it's the shift in your self-concept that creates the changes. And with that come different perceptions, different belief systems, different reactions, and ultimately a shift to becoming the person who really trusts herself. Confidence, worthiness, and a trust in yourself and the process come automatically through this transformation in your self-concept, through stepping into your future self, through becoming her. So I hope you enjoyed this. Comment on below. Share with me one thing where you really trust yourself already, where you're like, no doubt, I got this. And one thing or area where you're still doubting a bit or needing to trust more, where you know this needs some work. And then I'll see you in our next video.